inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Being a kingdom driven entrepreneur is not the same thing as being a Christian who happens to be a business owner. A kingdom driven entrepreneur is motivated by seeing an increase of the kingdom of God through the work they do in business. And they are propelled forward by operating from the truth of Matthew chapter six, verse 33. They seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all things will be added. So that is why we are here. And I'm super grateful that you've joined us today. Today's episode is sponsored by our upcoming KDE Live 2022, taking place in Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, November 11th and 12th. Our theme this year is Capacity Upgrade, and that is what we believe every attendee is going to receive during our time together. Greater kingdom capacity to yield to God, to dream with God, to collaborate with others, and to build with God and others. Kingdom-driven marketplace leaders need time to unplug from the day-to-day, surround themselves with authentic kingdom family, get equipped, and enjoy the undeniable goodness of a Holy Spirit-led and Holy Spirit-empowered atmosphere. Plus, we're going to be celebrating 10 years, 10, (laughs) a whole decade of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Movement. It's going to be such a rich and fun time together. And registration closes on Tuesday, October 18th, which is about three weeks from today. So we are down to the wire. Head on over to www.kdelive.com and get yourself registered. And now on to today's guest. I have not one, but two guests today a husband and wife entrepreneur team, Tim and Dr. Ramona Probasco. They are the inventors and founders of InShield Wiper. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that this conversation is on the list of one of my favorites of 2022. Tim and Dr. Ramona dedicated their business to Jesus as CEO years ago, and they have worked together to grow their business. They've sold over a quarter million in shield wipers, uh, primarily via live demonstration infomercials on QVC. But during the COVID pandemic, their business took a serious beating and their sales plummeted. And they are currently in the middle of an expansion of their business into retail. Plus, they've even worked on an additional product. So as you can imagine, this has meant a series of big decisions that they've needed to prayerfully make. You know, a ton of faith and patience and courage, both individually and collectively as a couple. And they share with vulnerability and transparency the journey of the last few years, the stretch that they are faced with today and how God has led them, empowered them and strengthened them in the midst of it all. Their story is a powerful reminder of the presence of Jesus with you always. I mean, he truly is Emmanuel, God with us. So listen in and enjoy this absolutely wonderful conversation that I had with Tim and Dr. Ramona Probasco. Tim and Dr. Ramona Probasco, what is going on, you two? Well, it is a pleasure to be invited to do this podcast with you. We've heard about your background and your work with people who are kingdom minded for business and Tim and I are tickled pink to be able to do this today. And the timing couldn't be any more perfect. (laughs) I love when that works out like that. (laughs) And where are you, where are you located by the way? Our business is based in San Diego. So yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, I really enjoyed, we had a little bit of pre-chat, get to know each other uh, a little bit and I loved how you already kind of came into this conversation. Like this is a very interesting time for us to be doing this interview and we're just going to be willing to just see, you know, see how the conversation goes and be willing to just be open and transparent about the journey. And that's what this podcast is all about. So first, thank you in advance (laughs) for, for your willingness to share. So let's get started by sharing just how you started in business in the first place. Yeah, so um, what happened is several years ago, I was cleaning the inside of my car, and I was trying to clean that haze off the inside of the windshield, 
everybody knows what I'm talking about because yeah. we all suffer from that. And so I was contorting and I was reaching out, trying to clean it. Then I took a microfiber cloth, put it on the back of my hand. My knuckles hit, but nothing else did. So I thought I'm going to go down to the store and buy something that fits on the back of my hand so I can clean that. Right. And I couldn't find it anywhere. So I thought, well, how hard would it be to invent that? So I bought the pieces, put it together, tested it out, ended up, it, it worked really well, able to get a patent on it. And um, just kind of from there, it, it just started to go. And then- Wait, 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 wait. I got to ask you a question. So, so are, is this just your personality type? where you just, you're in the middle of doing something and you're looking for a solution, can't find it. So therefore you just say, cause not everyone says, oh, why don't I invent this? So is this just part of your DNA, the way you were as a kid growing up or was this kind of like a divinely inspired moment? What was going on there? I, I truly believe it was a divinely inspired moment because I'm not smart enough to figure something like this <laughs> out. Because I'm serious. When people try in, the name of it is in-shield wiper, please yeah. inside the car windshield. And we've had different people try it out who say, man, the physics of this are incredible. Now, my wife has her doctorate. I don't. And I'm going, physics? I'm not even sure I took that class. So I, we, it's divinely inspired. But can I interject something here? Of course you can. Tim is very good at figuring things out, for lack of better words, okay? And say we're doing like a home project or whatever. And he's like, honey, this is not working. And I'll say to him, honey, just stick with it you always figure it out and i seldom i'm very cautious about using always never those types of terms but truthfully i i mean we've been together 10 years i can't think of a time where there wasn't some sort of snag problem that he didn't eventually figure it out and so i always encourage him stay with it so it doesn't surprise me that and and, and I, as i'm listening to him talk and share that part of the story i'm thinking the same thing you just got done saying like most people don't do that. No. You know, I've had things in my life and I don't turn around and solve it and patent it. Right. You know, so I think it's very unique to him. It is a gift that he has. And um, I mean, I get to benefit from it. So, well, and, and that's just kind of the start of the story. Um, as as I was able to invent this and, and begin to work with it, then uh, Ramona and I met and we ended up getting married and I had a lot of debt I brought into this because of trying to finance this and whatnot sure. on my own. And Ramona said, I, I like the product, but I believe in you as the man. And so she, as we were getting married, she invested money to kind of get us out of this debt. And wow. so at that point, I, I was like, you know, she's an investor in this company. She needs to be the majority stockholder of it. And so it was at that moment then that we became a woman-owned business, uh, you know, majority woman-owned, yes. but even more than that, talk about our night walking in the parking lot uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the, at the condo. This yeah, and I want to say something, too, to what my sweetie just shared there. We went back and forth about this because I didn't want us to carry the weight of that debt. And so, yeah, so I, I said to him, I'd be happy to help, you know, unload that and, and do something about it. When he offered, he said, honey, if someone else was investing the amount of money you're investing, they would have ownership. And I said, and not just little ownership, but <laughs> right? <laughs> big ownership. <laughs> and I said, well, that's not why I'm doing this. You know, and we actually went back and forth with that yeah. whole thing for a long time. You were engaged time. at this time? Yeah, it was, it was, right, it was before we got married. right before we got married. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we bought a car together before we were married, yeah. and I got him out of debt. Yeah, I don't necessarily advise that to him. I was. It was interesting because I was living in a condo across the parking lot for, from where she was living. Yeah, and so we would, you know, we we could share a car and everything like that. It was hilarious, and we'd always rock, walk around that parking lot at night before you know before heading off to our separate ways. And and it was during that. It was during that time. It was April third, two thousand and fourteen. And it was nighttime, and uh, we were living in San Diego, and we were talking to the Lord. We always talk to the Lord. I mean, it's just a constant flow, right? And it's usually, usually like, Lord, help us. What should we do with those type of conversations? And we said, Lord, we want to really completely release this company to you. Uh, at that point, Tim had a bunch of inventory in, in storage and a lot of debt. I saw the promise of the man, the character of the man, with a brilliant idea. 
Right. And so during this walk, we were talking about what does that mean to release the, the company to the Lord? What does it mean to dedicate it to him? We talked that through. And basically it's that we, to us, it's we run all of our decisions through Jesus. And when we haven't, like we've lost sight of that or we forgot or whatever, it tends to not always work that great. And we quickly get, you know, recalibrated. And so that night in the parking lot between his his condo that he was renting a room and I had uh, a condo right across the parking lot, in between those two buildings, we just held each other and we prayed and we said, Lord, we want to give this company, we dedicate this company to you. And we ask, Lord, in your benevolence, if you would please be willing to be the CEO of our company. So that was the yeah. beginning of the adventure together. Tim had already done quite a bit of work with Inshel Wiper, but like he said, wasn't really building it right. and was, was carrying a lot of the, the heaviness of the liability. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, after you make that really intentional decision and you're inviting God into being like, Jesus, be the CEO of this thing. Talk to me a little bit about the difference prior to how you were operating your business, prior to that moment, and then what shifted as a result of the dedication and the release of CEO position to Jesus? I'm a little thick headed. And sometimes I would find myself not only not listening to him, but not listening to my wife either. And what I really came to realize is, as we talked about this agreement is what's the most important thing. And so we've never had, I don't think, any decision where you've trumped as the president of the of the company and said, I'm, you know, I'm making this decision as the president because I'm not the president. Tim's not the president. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> we talk, what we do yeah. is, is yeah, we'll, we we'll come together, we'll discuss it. If we don't have agreement, we're and we're praying the whole time, we're saying, Holy Spirit, you've got it. We need to yes. bring us some agreement before we move forward. And by agreement, what we mean is harmony. That doesn't mean we don't disagree. That doesn't mean that we don't um, hit us, uh, a deadlock at times. And, you know, we, we have to pause to try to figure out, okay, Lord, well, what direction are we supposed to go in here? Um, so it's not, and it's not that we're like dancing through the tulips all the time in the office, right. but, you know, working together as a husband and wife has definitely has its challenges, right? Yes. Um, but the, we discovered very early on that, keeping strife out because strife it's a silent it's, killer it's, yeah, yeah it's just yes it just sucks. it's like a boa constrictor that's hiding there you don't know it's there but it will squeeze the life out of you, if yeah. you don't right so that's i would say that's probably the biggest thing and then just really for me personally we have this beautiful picture you can't see it right now but um of the lord and it's that uh famous painting called prince of peace that the little gal from, I think, Russia? Yeah, Russia or so Ukraine was, or something yeah. there. It's a famous oh, I know which picture you're talking yeah. about. Oh, yes. I yes. love it. I love it. And we got this beautiful canvas of, of the Lord and framed it, and we keep it in our office um, just to be mindful mm -hmm. that he's always with us. And, yes. and we, we look at that picture and we have conversations we do. all the time, you know, because we need to. Yeah. But it's really helped me to be... Oh, not always. I mean, sometimes I blow it, but, you know, just mindful of how I'm showing up. Yeah. You know, how I'm engaging with my sweetie. How am I responding to this, to an email or to someone on our team? Or it just has helped me just knowing that the Lord is present and I yes. don't want to disappoint him. So, you know, what's the, so what does it look? So I know Jesus is CEO. Uh, I heard that Ramona is president. Right. Uh, Tim, you are vice president, correct? Right, I'm vice president. So I understand president and vice president, but as it relates to the operations of the business, like who's doing what? What does that look like? What's the president doing? What's the vice president doing? And is there a team of employees? We we pretty much do everything together. It's it's it's, it's real interesting because Ramona brings. She doesn't have a background in business. Her background right. is in psychology. My background was in ministry. I worked for Billy Graham for seven years, graduated from Bible college, then went into business, then got my MBA. So I understand business, you know, from that aspect. Right. 
But what happens is, as we come together, we've made pretty much a conscious decision to pretty much do everything together because what I bring in is very different than what Ramona brings in. But when they bring them together, it's like this. It, I don't even know. It's like that. Well, it's just, it's a, yeah, it is. The, yes, definitely. Good word. Um, I didn't hear the word. What was the word? Gestalt. It's a German term that means the sum is greater. No, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Mm, parts. Ah, very good. Psychology term. Yeah. Yes. Um, but logistically, we have different things that we do to make things run smoothly. Right. You know, to, to our left here, we have this giant race board. And every day we put what we're going to, you know, strive to accomplish that day. And often we'll put a T for Tim and R for me next to each task. Um, so we're, we're not, we're not. Well, we run things by yeah. each other all yeah. the time. So no, I love like, that. And yeah. I, so I want to go back to something you had said. You were talked about agreement, harmony. And yeah. so when I heard that, what that means to me, and just tell me if, if I'm hearing it the way you're saying it, is when I think about harmony, that could mean that even if you disagree about the particular way forward around something or a particular decision point, the harmony comes in the fact that the person who that has the opinion that's not being moved forward on is actually at peace and okay with moving forward. And that so therefore there's no strife around that particular decision. Is am I did I catch that right? Right. We wait. Exactly. We wait mm -hmm. and we discuss. I mean, we'll pause. It doesn't matter. I mean, Grant, if we have an interview or Zoom meeting or something, we have to wait. But if it's just the two of us and yeah. we're at an impasse with something, you know, we'll put the pens down or stop, you know, on the on the computer, what have you. And we will talk it through because yeah. Tim and I were both very sensitive, huge empaths, you know, and we don't we don't do well when we're not in harmony. Yeah. But I that's in a sense kind of human nature but i think a lot of us have lost sight of how important it is to be congruent with oneself you know in agreement with god and in flow in our relationships yes but when tim and i are not in flow it's like everything it's like a squeaky wheel yeah you know, we have to stop that's the grind <laughs> well, that's the grind. it is horrible you know yeah. so we pause until we come to that place of you know, let's hug it out. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and I love it. We do something called listening prayer where we'll walk and 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 we'll ask the Lord to kind of speak to us. And we're just quiet. We'll listen and we'll say, what did you hear? What did you hear? We'll kind of talk about that. Well, very distinctly, one day I remember we were talking about something and I heard the Lord say, listen to me, being Jesus, yes. and listen to her, your wife. And it was like, you know, and then, and that was several years ago. Yes. Well, just this week, Ramona said to me, do you know why he said that to you? He said, because you're listening to yourself. So it's not disregarding yourself, right. but our tendency is to listen to ourselves. What he's reminding you is, listen to him as our CEO, listen to me as your wife in the same way that I listen to you. And so it really is this triangle of, where, of us really trying well, to- the two are better than one principle. Yeah, in yeah. Our scripture, and you know, that promise that two are better than one. And so- I, you know, what I tried to explain to him, it's not uh, because I'm smarter than him or better than him or what wiser than him. It's just that together we are like a cog in a wheel. And it's always like yeah, that always, it, it's in business, good. personal, doesn't matter what we do. It's like we definitely see that when we come together in that place of good flow, the output is always something that is better than if it was separate. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's super good. I love that. I love that you guys find the flow. You will contend for it. And if it's not present, you're going to contend for it. Right. And that's how you move forward. So that's really good. Now, you shared with me before we hit record that 2019 was a pretty big year for your business. You ended up on QVC. Tell that story of when just things just got really, really good in business. <laughs> Well, we kind of some backstory to that is um, before Ramona and I met, I had been on QVC, uh, and the first time I was on, it was against the closing ceremony of the Summer Olympics, and oh, so wow. I didn't hit the minimums of it. And they said, "Well, yeah, that's the whole a, world was yeah. watching the Olympics, <laughs> right?" And so, on QVC. <laughs> and, and so they said, "You know, we'll come back, we'll do it again." And so I went back again. I had to order more uh, more product, and so filled up the coffers again, went in. And we were selling a three pack at that point. 
And I think the three pack was like $22. So it was a really good price. It was, right. it was like $150 a piece, which is a really good price. And so the host is there talking and I'm live on air and you have seven minutes. And the host kept saying, you get one of these for $22. And I'm like, nobody's going to buy one of these for $22. I invented it. Well, you didn't say that. Not, not out loud. But yeah. I'm thinking right. that. You're so, thinking that. You're thinking that. Yeah. And so I, I turned to her several minutes into it. And I said, you know, the, the buyers here at QVC are so smart that they know most of us have two cars. Plus, you can use one in the house. That's why you get a three pack for $22. She goes, I don't think so, but let's check. They get back to her inner ear live on air and say, yes, it's three for that price. She goes, <laughs> Note to self, inventor is normally right. In this case, he was. Again, you get three for $22. That's a steal. Buy him now. That's all the time we have. See you later. And it was over. Well, what do you think happened to the sales? They were didn't didn't happen at all, right? So right. I had a whole per inventory, a warehouse full of inventory. So now go forward a couple of years. Ramon and I meet. We're, we're doing this thing in the parking lot talking. Give the company to the Lord. And we watch the movie Joy. Mm. Mm. And the movie Joy is about the girl, the lady with this self-squeezing mob on QVC and how she kind of failed the first time and then she got on and it just took off. Right. Well, we watched that movie together and when it got done. Well, I was encouraging Tim at the time. I knew this background story that he just shared with you. And I said, honey, this is such a great idea. Everyone has this problem. And why don't you reach out to QVC again? And he was just so like, just downtrodden and just so you know i mean discouraged by the debt and what have you and he it wasn't really doing anything with inshall wiper other than paying the warehouse bill in chicago right and i said why don't you reach out to them again so then a friend of ours told us about joy when i say talking to him i'm saying like for over a year she was like, <laughs> like, okay. like to try I'm to not keep saying me up. one conversation yeah, it, it was. Okay. this was an ongoing encouragement layer yeah. upon layer yes. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but I didn't want to be overly to where he kind of just totally feels deflated, but I right. also saw the promise in it. Yes. So then a friend mentioned about joy. We watched joy. And when I say we watched joy, it was, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm watching this man's face just fall, fall, fall. And he was on the verge of tears. And you just, I could just tell just choking back the tears and I was like, you know, it, I, I knew that his story was painful in the sacrifices he had made um, and the belief in it, but looking like it wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, but I still felt that fire inside that we need to try this. So I said, why don't you just try one more time just for fun? I know it's been several years. Reach out, see what happens. Right. So he went so in. I, I did. I reached out. To I have the, still the email of, of our buyer who had been my buyer, and she got right back to me and said, I'm not in that position anymore, but that's a great product. Here's she who you talk it. to. She, yeah, she remembered it. it. So mm -hmm. it was like, really? And so we talked, and they looked at it, the new buyer, and she goes, I love it. Let's get you back on. And so that was then we started doing overnights and, you know, going in at 2 a.m. It's live programming in Pennsylvania. We'd fly out to New Jersey, drive and do it. Sometimes Ramona could come if she wasn't seeing clients because she was still in private practice right. at the time. Otherwise, I would go by myself. And there was one night after about a year of being on overnight, the middle of the night, 2 a.m., that I call her up and, and she goes, how'd it go? And I said, well, it, it was good. It was, it was an okay show. And it was maybe kind of what we standardly had been doing. Well, the next morning when the numbers really hit, because that's when they kind of post them all, I called her up and I said, we're like four or five times. You thought it was a mistake. Done. I said, I think they <laughs> Does something and, happen here? <laughs> yeah. And I flew home. And when I get back to San Diego, the buyer called us and said, you guys did fantastic. We're ready to take you to prime time. And, and really then that was the beginning of 2019. And 2019 was a fabulous year for us. Mm -hmm. Ramona took the on-air training. And as soon as she started doing it on QVC, our numbers just skyrocketed. And and the hosts there loved us. They loved us as, couple, as a couple, you know, getting to know both of us and everything. Yes. Um, but then COVID hit. Yes, and COVID. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of where it really... That's that's where things... I mean, not, not just for us, but many, many businesses obviously really struggled and unfortunately a lot of people are in business right. um we apologize about that background noise. <laughs> no you're good you're good okay we're good okay um so yes yeah, so COVID hit and what happened there is that QVC would not allow anybody in studio 
So on air guests like ourselves, and we were very unique. I don't recall any, any other inventors. inventors being there talking yeah, about we them. were very unusual, the actual inventors to be on. Well, that all QVC, you know, I mean, excuse me, COVID stopped all the on air appearances. So then we had to do the shows on the telephone. We weren't even doing Zoom at their Skype at that point. It was just oh, I was going to the say, they didn't do Zoom phone. or anything like that. Okay, Not so you were on the phone. phone. Right. Yeah. And so, and like Tim said, you know, whoever was doing the show, the other guy would try to fly out to try to help set up. You know, we'd be wiping the car down, putting all the electronics out, getting everything ready. Well, of course, no one takes care of your baby like you take care of your baby, right? So during COVID, we're looking at the car, it's like dusty and the yeah. lights aren't up correctly and they're not getting the right camera angles. And it's like, and of course, everybody's just trying to make it, right? So we understand. Right, everyone's trying to do the best they can. <laughs> yeah, they're trying it's not to do the best same. They can. Exactly. So then it went when we were Skyping. Yeah. And that was a little bit better, but basically we had to go and get all this TV equipment. Set it up in our house. I would be in the garage in the car. Ramona would be in the kitchen. kitchen. So we could show both in, you know, because in-shield wiper works really good to clean the haze off the inside of the windshield. But when you put it on the palm of your hand, what Ramona discovered is it cleans electronic screens, ah. uh, iPhones, stainless steel. Mm -hmm. I mean, just incredible. Right. So you were so, able to show both of those. Yes, show both of them. And so that was, again, Tim's brilliance in being able to like somehow plug things into the right places and get us connected <laughs> with QVC. Because you have seven minutes. You blow it. You, you know what I'm live saying? And you're, you're live. live on air. Seven minutes. That's it. Seven minutes. Okay. Do or die time. And so we did that all through COVID. And even after COVID, mm -hmm. they just started bringing guests back on. Yeah. So our sales, I mean, because naturally it's something you have to demonstrate. It's about right? relationship too. And Ramona was so good in relating to the host and, and felt like a friend. And so the customers would just re respond to that. Well, across right. Skype, how do you do that? It just wasn't as warm feeling. You know? Yeah. I definitely, it was very hard for me because I couldn't, I mean, I, being a counselor for almost 25 years, I love sitting with people, I like being with them, I like being able to see their nonverbals. Well, you, you can't really do that that well through Skype, especially when you're not used to it. Now people are used to Zooming and it feels a little more sure. natural. So our sales just pretty much plummeted, yeah. you know? And and so we knew we had to branch out. And so we thought, well, let's we really need to get this into retail now, into the big box retailers. So, was that your assumption or was that like a, a conclusion after a prayerful meeting with your CEO? No, that, that's a good it's question. CEO both. It was because both? Lord, what do we do? We can't have all of, even though we've had massive success, we've sold over a quarter million inch of wipers on QVC. That's a lot. So, that's a lot of wipers. That's yeah. a lot of wipers. Yes. And that's only domestically. Um, you know, so we were talking to the Lord because we were like, Mm. Are you guiding us differently? If the sales were starting to go down on this channel, are you talking, right. do we need to look at other channels? And we felt like he was saying, yes, you, you do need to look yeah. at that. So yes. during COVID, we did do, uh, we researched several companies that could help us distribute and get into the big box stores. Right. So, so we, we were on a, uh, we, we did a virtual trade show and virtual trade shows were the worst. You, you set up everything on your computer and then you sit there you and pay wait. a ton of money to stare at your computer and all day. If somebody doesn't come by and click and say, I'd like to visit with you. Well, we were doing the national hardware show and we got pinged by this, uh, by this gentleman. And he said, I really like your product. And we would like to talk to you about InShield Wiper and we might be able to help you. And we're like, okay, great. We thought somebody was going to want to buy some. Right. So we we get this. Uh, we set up a call with him to to listen because we always wanted you know whatever leads could be there. And he said we're the company that had worked. We discovered Yeti, the cooler and the, the drink people. Yeah. The so 10, 15 years ago, when they were trying to sell a five hundred dollar cooler, when most anybody ever paid for a cooler was a hundred bucks. <laughs> right. They said we really helped them to design their messaging and their packaging to what Yeti is today. And they said we think you had that same potential mm -hmm. so we're like oh okay. yeah so we were really like whoa first of all how did you find us virtually yeah um and second of all we were really touched that they saw the promise absolutely the product yeah so we really prayed about that and hired them and started working with them and they designed beautiful packaging for us getting us ready for retail we got connected with a, a group called dpg dpg distribution 
George Davison, fantastic, just so connected with. He's been doing helping people like us get into retail for over 30 years. Nice. And just a wonderful, wonderful man, treats people well, yeah. loves the Lord. It couldn't be, be a better fit. So we started working with George and he loves InShield Wiper. He said, this is going to be a hit in retail. I've got the reps doing it. So they started calling on retailers kind of the beginning of 2022. Well, during COVID, yeah, so. the end of oh, so, so we're into this year now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But right before that, we had, we had had people say, do you use InShield wiper dry or do you have a solution? And so you can use it dry most of the time, but if you have stubborn stains, it's good to have a solution. So Ramona goes, let's invent a solution. Right. So see, I'm not the only inventor. And so we we turned our kitchen into a pretty much a laboratory, a chemistry lab for sure. And we like it out for almost a year. <laughs> yeah, and and, and we, had, we had all the different things. And I I love spreadsheets, so I had my little spreadsheet set up. And she'd say, okay, add this amount to this amount, this amount. Use a little dropper, put it in. I had recorded all. We tried out on our laptop. Worked good, but not quite what we wanted. I was trying to find something that could solve that problem where people would say, well, my you know, I, I need something more. I think I need some kind of cleaner when I use the insulin wiper right. to remove the haze on the windshield or on, you know, computer screens or what have you. And or stainless steel. Or stainless steel. steel. Right. And we like to use products that aren't heavy with chemicals and, you know, safer for your body and for your family. And so I said, let's try to come up with something where we only use EPA safer ingredients. Well, I didn't even know what that meant. Really. <laughs> we do now. So we do. Oh, yeah, we do. And so I just started researching, researching, researching to find something that could not only clean glass and mirrors, but would be safe on electronic screens. Right. So there's a challenge. Okay? And we prayed every step of the way. All the time. Because yes. we said, you are the great chemist, Lord. You know what this is. I doing. love it. But Ramona didn't give up. She kept going, 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 going. And we would just, like Tim said, we'd order these different ingredients and we'd mix them in these little, like a little dropper, yeah, dropper. scientific dropper. And we'd literally count the drops of what we were putting of the different yeah. ingredients into the solution. And then I'd say, okay, let me try it on my Mac. And it was like almost a brand new Mac. Yeah. I thought, well, if I'm scared to try it on my products, I don't want it to, you know, give it to someone else. And then tell Shay about what we sent it off. Oh, with. yeah. This this is the most fascinating thing. So it worked. It worked. Fabulous. We said, right. okay, we got the formulation here. So then we have some friends and we said, uh, you guys, would you happen to know a chemist who could look over this for us to tell us what we have here? They kind of looked at each other and said, well, actually, a friend of ours is the retired vice president of research and development for Unilever Worldwide. Wow. He holds about 15 patents and he invented all detergent, for instance. Yeah. And so we sent the formulation to him. He called us. We set up a call with him. He gets on Zoom and he says, Ramona, did you come up with this formulation? We said, yes, she did. He said, now you have your doctorate. Is your doctorate in chemistry? She goes, no, <laughs> psychology. Why do you ask? And he said, because there's this scale. And if you want this to clean glass as well as stainless steel, you need to be in between 16 and 18 on this scale. I don't even remember what it is. Right. Said, We're at 17. You hit the sweet spot. Come on, and listen. No said, chemistry you, background. That's right. And, and, and tell them what you said. Tell them what you said. To I, well, I said it's the good Lord. I said we know the great chemist. Yes. I, I prayed and I did. I would just say, Lord, guide me, guide me as I'm researching, you know, different ingredients to blend together. Yes. Is I mean it really? That's why we call we him the chief everything yeah, officer, yeah. chief anything officer, chief everything that's right. officer, yeah. chief everything officer, yeah. chief, chief everything officer. That's exactly right. And, and that's a cool part of the story is that, you know, when people ask us, I, I don't have a background in this. And yet, you know, here's this like renowned chemist telling us we hit this sweet spot. Yeah. How did you do it? The only answer is Jesus Christ. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I love that. Beautiful because it's, it's the absolute truth. Yes. It's the testimony oh. of Jesus. I love that. Okay, so now, okay, we went down that side, but I got to bring us back to where we are. Cause you were talking about how you are working with this gentleman for retail. So now you've got a solution and you have your uh, in-shield wipers. What mm -hmm. happened with retail? 
So do you want me to go ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so we started working with George. He has his reps calling on, uh, you know, on um, buyers. And so we right now we have in-shield wiper in truck stops. It's in Pilot Flying J, Travel America, loves truck stops. It just ordered it. We're in a number it's of other rolling places. Out. It's, it's, it's yeah. rolling out there. We've gone to some trade shows and presented, and we're in a number of kind of independent retailers around the U.S., but all of the big box stores, the Target, Walmart, all of them, do their reviews in the fall for the following year. Well, I we started see. in January. Right. So we've had this nine months, and what we had to do is we had to stock up on inventory. Mm, because so it's time to make a order, huge investment when you don't you know need, what's going to be right. ahead. He said, exactly you need right. to have the inventory, guys, in order to fulfill those orders. You have one chance. So for this last year, we've been taking, and again, very small sales coming in right now. We've been getting inventory and stockpiling our warehouse. So we have tons of inventory and getting ready for these POs to be cut so we can fulfill them. And that's where God has us right now. It's like, yeah. And, and yeah. Great. So you got to talk, talk to me about this because this is a very, this, what you're walking through right now is not an unfamiliar scenario for many business owners who have to deal with inventory and projections and all of those things. So talk to me about like, what are the conversations you're having with the Lord right now to walk through this thing with grace not and not be in fear or, you know, like, how are you walking this particular season out? Ooh, that's um, a good one. It's been hard. Yeah. You know, it's been really hard because it's, it's not like George tells us, you know, he's like 30 years experience he has doing this. He's like, you guys, you want to build it slow, build your foundation. You know, he has his reps doing, calling on all these buyers. It doesn't happen fast. He said, you know, those that really end up being successfully successful and financially benefiting are, are, are ones that can, in a sense, hang in there. You know, and the perseverance. It's a perseverance. As a matter of fact, we just read James this morning that the chapter in James about talking about perseverance. Yes. So it's like now we've we so well, I remember one instance. We're sitting there with our whiteboard and we're saying, okay, we have X amount of inventory right now, and George is telling us to double that. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there saying, Lord. Do we do this? Do we do this? How do we do this? And we both said, what number do you feel? And we came up with the same number. Oh, and wow. So we said, okay, we're, we're going to take that as a word from you, and we're going to order that. And so, again, we run every part by him. Yes. But now that it's like the, the inventory is in the warehouse, we're ready to fulfill those orders the reps are out there calling and the buyers are making their decisions. And so as, as I mentioned to you, I think right before we got on, we're kind of in that George Mueller moment right now where he was a gentleman who ran an orphanage in England back in the 1700s and he relied on God for everything. And one night they sat down to dinner, however many kids were in that orphanage and there was not a, a crumb of food anywhere in that orphanage. And he sat them down and he prayed. And he thanked the Lord for the food they were about to eat. <laughs> and there was a knock on the door when he said amen. And there was food there. And it's like, Lord, we feel sometimes like we're in that moment of saying, we want our faith to be increased. We want to see a miracle. But nobody wants to be in a position to need a miracle. That's where we are right now. And that's part of this process as believers really trying to do kingdom work with Jesus, we have to have faith because faith is what pleases him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But yeah. faith, you, know, you can't see. You have to walk in trust. Yes. Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, um, one of the things I, I commonly talk about is the power of twins of faith and patience or faith and perseverance. It's like, it's with, then in Hebrews, it says, it was with faith, and patience or perseverance that they saw the promises of God, yes. you know? And it's like, that is the very season that you're in. It's just, it's the consistent walking this thing out by faith. Like we, like, Lord, we believe you. Like we came into, we actually came into agreement agreement on the number in making that order. And then having to walk out this space of time right now of, you know, 
we believe, <laughs> we believe where there's this process that we're having to walk between that decision that you made, the investment that you made and the weight for the fall. What were you going to say, Ramona? I was just going to say, um, you know, we all enjoy hearing stories of like other people, at least I can speak for myself, you know, like the story that Tim just shared about George Mueller. And I think, wow, that's incredible, you know, and it just touches me. It is when you're walking through it. And I've been through tough things in my life, you know, um, as all of us have, but this is really, this is really stretching me. Um <laughs> It's like logistically on a daily basis, what do you have to do to continue to, to stay afloat? And Tim and I have had to make very, very difficult decisions where we chose, we had a beautiful home in San Diego and we said, okay, we're going to downsize and we're going to, we're going to scale back. And I mean, we're in our fifties, right? So it's yeah. like, uh, you're usually not doing, going in that direction at that stage of life, right? But we're like, what do we need to do to lighten the load here and be able to get through this season? And so uh, we moved out of our home. Uh, we had an estate sale and sold most of our items. Um, didn't do quite as good on that estate sale as we were hoping to, but oh well. Um, moved uh, out of state. We moved to Idaho because it's much less expensive. Um, our company is still housed in San Diego, but right. we personally moved for, you know, and moved into an apartment. And it's been tough. You know, it's really, it's like, wow. You know, um, yeah, it's tough. Well, it's, it's really tough. It's the kind of thing that there's no other way to get out of this than to go through it. We can't go get jobs. She can't go back to counseling. I can't go back to my nonprofit work or whatever, or go and get a consulting job. Well, what he means by that is the amount of debt that we had to take on to, to fund the company going and to get get the inventory uh, that we needed. You know, I could see clients until Jesus comes back and it's not going to pay that bill. Okay. It's only sales that's going to get us. So you know. So, Understood. yeah, but this was really hard on Ramon as a nester, you know, as as a woman who loves to have a home, and 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 I just so admire her, and I'm so thankful for her as a partner and and a leader in this business to say, I will do whatever it takes personally to yeah. ship stuff for us to move into a small rental apartment yeah. to get through this season. And what's amazing is as you look out of our window in our apartment. There's a grocery store that you can only see the very top of it, and the insignia for their for their name is the letter B. And as we've sat there, we've said, the Lord is saying to us, B, don't do right now. I want you to be. You've done what you need to. You have the people out there working to pull in what needs to be pulled in, but I'm going to teach you guys something as you are just mm -hmm. being. That is which it's really amazing as we were sitting on our little apartment balcony looking at this bee, right? We get this email that this grocery store uh decided to carry inch wiper. Yeah. We didn't we didn't even approach them. It's one of the reps calling on yeah. them. Yeah. And and we're like, are you serious? Right across in the middle of Idaho, right across from our apartment. Wow. We carry our product, you know. Wow. Which was so a God like, wink moments. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! You know, it's, uh, but you know, again, our stories. It's not for everybody. It's not necessarily the the route that the Lord's going to take other people through. Sure. Um, but for us, it's it's the decision that we made to go for it. Yes, that's so good. I'm curious. Uh, I think it's only one other question for you. I'm curious how you are encouraging, how are you being like David <laughs> right now? How are you encouraging yourself and how are you encouraging one another as you're walking this thing out? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. Um, I think it's being empathetic with each other, you know, and even like this morning, we, we know we have to keep working out. We have to physically stay active. We have to, we have so much stuff to do and so many calls and all of this, but it's like, we have to stay 
physically active. So we go over to the gym that the apartment has and, and we're there working out and, and I'm thinking about business stuff and, and I bring up something to Ramona and she's like, this is kind of my one time to just be yes. and to allow myself. And, and I thought, you know, I'm not being real empathetic toward her right now. I need to encourage her to take this time so that she can kind of rejuvenate. Yes. And, and, and so it's it's really a balance because sometimes I won't quite remember what I should or need to do to be empathetic and encourage her, but we know we need to do that. Yeah, and I think part of that also is we, thankfully, both of us are not usually like down in the dumps at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of, you know, help each other in that regard. But it's also remembering like the good that's happening. You know, we're in conversation now. We've got an international rep that George connected us with, incredible lady. And we are now in serious conversations with QVC Japan, QVC UK, QVC Germany. Um, so that the, all of those doors are opening and, yes. and we'll be eventually doing those shows internationally, you know? Yes. So we try to remind each other of the good things are, that are happening intermittently yes. as we're running out this marathon, you know? Um, and I think just we're, we're both pretty quick to apologize. You know, Tim's great at it. He is. He's good. <laughs> I'll come around eventually. <laughs> You know, but yeah, we both we, we both really want to keep that harmony. And so we yes. do we, we try to keep short accounts with each other. If we hurt each other's feelings or or maybe aren't as empathetic and whatnot. Because what you said, Shay, is so key. We have to be courageous yeah. and that encouragement. I mean, yeah. part of the word encouragement is courage, right? So we need to have that. Yeah. We just have a good cry. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is hard. This is not fun. Yeah. You know, and uh I, I'm I'm not enjoying this part of it. And a year from yeah. now, it'll be a different conversation because we, be. truly, we truly believe we'll be on yes. the other side of it. Yes. But talking about it while you're going through it, where it's powerful. There is uncertainty. Yes. We don't know. Well, and what really keeps us a big part of what keeps us in the fight is the 501c3 that um, the the mm-hmm. law firm that you know helps us with things uh, helped us set up. And that just got set up this year. It's called the Healing Well Living Free Foundation. And it's based on a book that I wrote about my story of a 20 year. I got married very young. Uh, it was very abusive. And it was my story of how I got into it, through it, out of it, and the steps the Lord used in my life to bring healing and wholeness back. And so, like Tim mentioned earlier, that was a big um, incentive for me to partner with him. It's not only to help him and to work with him. But I said, I'd like to give a portion of our profits to help domestic violence survivors and their kiddos. And so I try to remind myself of that as we're going through this. Yes. You know, um, that that's a big reason because we are going to help a lot of people. Yeah, you are. I I believe it. We're going to help a lot of people domestically and internationally. And I know our foundation We've got incredible board members. God has brought incredible people uh, to for us to work with. So that that keeps me going. Like mm-hmm. I know this is but a stepping stone. Yes. Oh, I realize that, and and so we we remind each other why we're doing this, you know. And people are going to to see that you know part of our story, you know that it's not all it's it's tough you go through tough things but the lord is in the tough yeah. that's right that's we're gonna right. be we're gonna be one of those overnight successes that took 15 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. i want to talk to you all about that by yeah. the way you know we'll have to have the update conversation it'll be yeah. so good but i love that i love that you're willing to share in the midst i love that this is documented you know i love that you'll be able to look back and and mine the gold from the season that you're in right now and that you're holding fast to the vision and the vision giver in the midst of this and one another, which is, I mean, that's it. That's what it's about. And so I just love your heart. You guys are just the sweetest folks. I just love you guys. And I just met you. <laughs> well, we love you too, Jay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I just I just absolutely uh, love this story. And I thank you so much for being willing to just share with both transparency and vulnerability, you know, the walk that you're that you're going through together, but not 
alone at all because, you know, the Lord's right there with you. So how do people, can folks actually buy, They can't. how can you buy the in, the in shield? Can you just like go to a website and buy it? Like, or you sure. have to go to retail? Well, like, how does that work? Absolutely. You can go to our website. It's one of the easiest way. And so it's inshieldwiper.com, I-N-S-H-I-E-L-D, wiper, W-I-P-E-R. It's like the inside of the windshield. So inshield wiper. Uh, Amazon, you, you can get it on Amazon. You can pick it up on Amazon. Although a lot of corrects to windshield wiper all the time. On yeah, Amazon. we're still working on that. <laughs> you so know, you got to hunt for it a little bit on Amazon. happens to you, just persevere. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So inshieldwiper.com is where That's folks correct. should go. Ramona, Tim, you all are just wonderful folks. And I really appreciate this conversation. I really enjoyed it. So thanks for sharing with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Tim and Dr. Ramona. Oh my gosh. Precious, precious people. I so enjoyed our conversation. Mr. Bynes, our CEO and my dear husband is in the house. What's going on, Phil? Whoop, whoop. I'm in the house. Whoop, I didn't get whoop. King Phil this time, but that's okay. We'll move on. <laughs> We'll, well we'll have king phil's takeaways right now how's oh, that okay all right there we go okay let's i keep, redeemed i it. redeemed the moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um my first point from um tim and ramona is that harmony is needed in kingdom business right and so um it's from the standpoint i think ramona said to keep strife out of out of you know the business right out of marriage mm-hmm. out of anything that's that, you know, God is in, you know, we want to have harmony. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, she said something and I actually wrote it down. And so this is quotable from uh, from Dr. Ramona is we want to be in agreement with God, but we want to be in flow with others around us. And I thought that was really powerful. So that's that's the importance of harmony in a kingdom business to be in agreement with God, but be in flow with the other people around us. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. Mm-hmm. My second point here is um, God is not only good at being your CEO, but he's also good at being a great chemist. <laughs> <laughs> I good at all was, things. <laughs> yes. I mean, we, we say that he's the chief everything officer, but yes. I think it needed to be reiterated because like, it's so amazing that as she was working through and 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 doing like high school chemistry like project, I mean, literally as she was talking about, as she was sharing what she was doing, I was like, oh my goodness, I can see my daughter in in high school, you know, doing the chemistry product and coming up with something. But it's a matter of us involving God with it, you know, and and eventually, you know, you measure all the things out and they hit the sweet spot, you know. I think they said that they talked to someone who knew a chemist and. After he saw the formula, he was like, wow, you hit the sweet spot for it, yeah. you know. And so that only could come through, you know, a uh, relationship with the great chemist. You know, as you were saying that, I was just thinking about the goodness of, of play. You know, if we don't, if she didn't take the time to like to sit, to create, really to play with this, you know, like until she could kind of get some things together. I, we, I can think of multiple testimonies over the last nine years on this podcast where it's just like, it's been that willingness to sit with the creator to create together and the goodness that comes out of that being willing. That's part of dreaming with God too, is just like that flow with him and just like allowing yourself to just be open and play and, you know, see how things play out and work out. And I just love that so much about this story. So, so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. The third point I have here is the whole is the greater than the sum of the parts, right? And so, and I know she used a German word for that. I didn't catch it. And I, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, even say, dare I try to word. pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I know but I made her it repeat is, it. Yeah. But it is the, it, it's a story of how we can, how we can work together. Right. I mean, especially as husband and, and wives in business together, or, you know, let's say partners, you know, that are in something together. Like we have to come to the understanding that the whole is greater than the sums of the part. They talk about how they have crossover in their business. And that's something I'm really big into as I think about the organism versus organization, you know? Um, So they're able to work in the the business together, not having, so they have things that they do and that they're responsible for as individuals, but 
they talk to each other about all the things, right? Right. There is no, there is no seg- segmentation, I should say. They're together, but they just have different roles at different times, right? Right. And so I thought that was very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It is. It's good. And the fourth thing I have here is perseverance is key to success. Um, and we need faith to persevere. Right? Mm-hmm. That is so true. You know, and then I, you know, of course you, you gave, uh, you gave them faith plus power twins, um, faith plus fa- faith and patience. It's with mm-hmm. faith and patience that we see the promises of God. That's right. And it, it was just good to hear it in a different perspective there. So perseverance, yes. faith and patience. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> amen. Of and it. amen. That's a word all by itself for somebody, including me on today. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I was reminding myself about the power of twins just yesterday, you know? So I think it's, yeah, that's, that's super key to kingdom life in general, kingdom business, kingdom life, kingdom, all the things is those, tw- those power twins, faith and obedience and faith and patience. So good stuff. Mm-hmm. Was that all of the takeaways? Those that's, were good. that's all I have. I, I could have had so much more, but that's all yeah. I have. There was there was plenty of goodness in that conversation to to draw from for sure. All right, so everybody listening here, if you didn't know, we have a it's I'm going to keep saying it's new because it's still relatively new. <laughs> we have a new resource available to you. It's called Seek First the Kingdom: Twelve Powerful Questions to Connect You with God's Mind and Heart in Business. And so this is an eight page digital resource uh, that I created to really help you to engage God more powerfully and intentionally in your business. And so whether you're at the beginning part of this journey of doing business in partnership with God, or you've been doing this for a minute, you've been doing this for a while, I want to encourage you to grab a hold of this resource because I believe that there's something in there. There's some, there's some, some new point of discovery and goodness for you uh, when you engage God with these questions. So if you head over to Meeting with God.biz, meeting with God.biz, B I Z, you can grab hold of that resource for free. Mr. Bynes, anything that you want to add before we get out of here? No, I, something was funny in my head as you, you were talking about um, what you were talking about. But I'm going <laughs> okay. I'm to I'm hold, hold it. I'm going to hold my piece. You're going to hold your piece? Yeah, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold my mule. All right. He's holding his mule, and we're getting out of here. We will see you next week or you'll hear from us next week on the next episode of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. Take care and God bless you. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.